Hi guys, a uh, quick tutorial on how to create a battle map using the GIMP. Click, click new, uh, set size when you use an A3 for example, make sure it's on landscape, click OK, ignore that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is create a battle grid, so let's label it grid, always work in layers, click OK. I'm going through this rather quickly, just so I don't bore the hell out of you, and it makes it easier rather than me rambling on. So we go filters, uh, map, no, render, pattern, uh, grid. Okay, default is a grid that is one pixel thick, spacing of 16 pixels. pixels. Okay, so we know that we need to have spacing of one inch for a battle map. Okay, it's a zero intersection, trust me on that one. Now, as you can see, we've got long lines there. We don't want lines, we want little cross hatching things and that's where we go to the intersection okay and let's make the intersection 2.5 no uh, let's work in millimeters so how fat do we want it let's have it half a millimeter fat that's pretty good um, now the offset we want in so how long do we want it? Let's have it about 25 millimeters. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. What we're going to do is we're going to drop these back to pixels um, to make it easier for us to work in. Okay. Now the other thing is it's a bit of wasted space there and a bit of wasted space there so let us uh, move it a little bit Right, okay, let's just drop back to millimeters. It's, it's a bit more intuitive that way. Let's try seven, let's try ten. Okay, so that's in the middle of that one, that's not in the middle of that one. So let's let's go a 7.5. That's in the middle of that one. Close enough for government work. Let's drop it down. Five. Okay, let's drop it down by 10. And so this is just making sure that we've got a nice, that the grids are placed nice and symmetrically. And that's, that's good enough there. So let's change these back to pixels. And let's make a quick note of that. So we have intersection is 6 pixels. Spacing is 1 inch. Don't worry too much about that. Offset is 118 by 89. The intersection of 30. Okay, so we'll click OK and save that one. Let's create a new layer called Grid 2. Okay, this time we're going to have it a little bit offset. And the reason why we do that is that means that if we're on something black, you can still sort of see it because the offset will be white. Um, pattern Grid. Okay, so what we want to do is at the moment it's six wide so let's offset it to take away six now watch what happens see it moves up and if we take six off that one which is going to be 83 it'll move across now if we change the uh, color to a white we end up with this which is not that impressive because it's on a white background, but if we remove the background there, it looks quite nice. Okie dokie, so when we increase the font, so if it's not font size that size, it looks pretty good. So now to make our job a bit easier, we want to have something that'll snap to this. So we have, uh, let's configure a grid. So we know that the grid is going to be one inch. Okay, and we know the offset is going to be now for some reason, I think it's, I think if I remember correctly, it's the opposite, so let's go, um, and if it doesn't work, which will fix it, don't we, yeah, three pixels, that pixels, no, okay, let's go millimeters then, so what was it, was, um, 10, and 7.5 or something, Oh wait, there's pixels up there, so don't worry. You can all stop worrying. Um, so it was 118 and 89. Okay, let's click OK. 
Uh, now let's see if our snapping works. No, it's not snapping to anything. Ah, that's right. We've got to go snap to grid, take away snap to guides. Okay. So it's sort of snapping, but not really, is it? Let's see. Okay, yeah, that, that's snapping pretty good. So if we have a look where the... Um, so what's actually happening is it's sort of getting a little bit... It's sort of getting quite magnetic at some point. So it's, it's generally snapping quite nicely. Um, I mean, it's not perfect, but it, it's, it's close enough um, snapping for the point of this tutorial. So let's get down to business. Um, what I like to do is... We've got those two visible. Let's make a new from visible that creates um, a merging of grids one and grids two. And this way, what we can do is we can drop down the opacity. And let's make that just type it in 50% um, opacity. That way, you can see what's underneath it. And if you don't need these, delete. You can see what's underneath it and it won't affect things. Let's create a new layer. Let's call this. Um, stones. We're going to render some stones. Let's go filters, um, distorts, uh, mosaics. Okay, so let's get some. Okay, um, so let's get a tile size. Oh, what would be a nice tile size? 15, that's pretty small. You, know, you don't want it too small, you don't want it too big, mind your tricks and imagination. Let's go, let's go 25. Uh, tile height. You probably want it pretty flat, so we'll go 1. Tile spacing, yeah, we can leave it at 1. Tile neatness, now this is how regular it looks. So if we go up, it looks regular to 1. If we go down low, it starts to get kind of jaggy and nasty looking. So let's... So this is just all personal preference. Okay, I think that looks pretty nice. Light direction, so at 135 lights coming down that way. Color variation, we don't really want color variation. Fitted surfaces, adds a little bit of texture to it without having to work too hard. Click OK. Now we just wait for the GIMP to chug away and do its magic. And it's rendering. So while that's rendering, let's create another window. And let's call this one. Um, I guess we just call it a floor color. Um, okay, let's call it yeah. Um, floor. Okay. Okay. So it's rendered the the stones. So we have stones there. Now let's just, we're going to relay, sorry, if you relabel that to grid, raise that up there, okay, so we've got like a nice little grid, let's add a bit of colour, um, let's add a bit of colour to the affair, okay, um, let's fill, so we just click fill, Okay, whoops. And let's just drop that layer down. Okay. So it's starting to come along quite nicely. And we have a look at that. It's getting there. Now let's mark out a quick and nasty dungeon. So let's. Create an entrance way there. Holding shift. So I've selected use that box thing. Hold shift, that's adding to the selection. Now let's create rooms. Let me 
doing here is just creating two random shapes and okay so what I'm going to do is what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to fill this actually I'm going to create another layer otherwise so I'll call this the room template so we can always come back to it if we manage to really screw it up and what we're going to do let's fill let's fill let's fill with a black color okay um, and that only looks black because we've got the stones on top of it if we raise that layer it's perfectly black um, we're going to hide that because we're not really going to use that. What we want to do now is we want to, um, where are we? Stroke selection. Let's make it, let's make the line width in millimeters. Let's make it uh, two mil. Actually, let's make it, yeah, two mil should be fine. Oh dear, I did it. I didn't create a new layer, so let's create a new layer. Um, so let's call it room outline. And now let's do exactly what we did before, which was stroke selection. Okay, so it's coming along nicely. Um, and what we want to do now is create the a new layer, and let's call this um, I don't know rock, for want of a better word. Okay, now for rock, let's actually get it looking like some rock. Uh, go to filters, um, render clouds, solid noise. Now solid noise. Oh shit. Um, okay, we've got to get rid of this selection. So control A selects the whole lot and then we do the same thing so render clouds solid noise um, let's increase the detail 15 let's change that to one and one okay and just hit random until you get sort of a sort of yeah so something yeah something like that should be okay okay so let's click OK so what that's going to do is that's going to create a like a cloud like pattern and while that's happening let's change that to so now what we've got is we've got black as the foreground light grey as the background okay there's our cloud what we're going to do is we're going to apply a colour map to it so remember we changed the foreground and the background Colors, map, color gradient map is what I meant to say. Okay, so instead of being a solid tint, uh, solid wash, it, it's got a bit of texture to it. Now what we can do...